Okay, so the next game I want to dive into is the second game jam that I ever worked on. Uh, and this one, I made the decision to team up with uh, my good friend Devon, uh, also known as Sermi. He's an artist, and for me, that's huge because I'm a terrible artist, and being motivated to work on a game is very difficult when everything you make looks like garbage. Uh, so working with him was a really fun idea, and both of us were super excited about this. Uh, so this one happened uh, in August of 2014, uh, so just a few months after the one uh, before. And I had actually gained a significant amount of experience in Game Maker since then. Uh, I was in a class in Game Maker in high school. Uh, so this is the Ludum Dare 30, uh, about about four months after the previous game jam. Uh, so I'm just going to start off by playing the game. Hopefully it's not too loud. It's probably really loud. Oh, that's not too loud at all. All right. Uh, so this is... <laughs> God, this music is so awful. <laughs> so this is Intersolar Super Spaceway. Uh, oh, I for... Uh, yeah, the theme for this... Uh... The theme for this jam was uh, connected worlds, and so the idea that me and Devon came up with was uh, you are a space pilot whose goal is to clear out the ways in between planets so that you can build an, uh, a spaceway, a bridge between the planets. Uh, so we took connected worlds very literally and we're going to make connected worlds as in building a bridge. Uh, and so if you go to the options menu, you just got full screen and mute. That's going to become sort of a consistent thing. I think most of the games that I work on in Game Gems, those are the only options. Uh, but we did have a multiplayer planned for this that obviously never happened. I had no idea how to make multiplayer, and uh, that was not going to happen. Alright, so if we go to the single player, uh, it tells us to select a planet. We also had all of these planned out to be different levels. Um, I think there's only one or two in this demo. Uh, so you click on it, and you can't click the Earth, but the Moon is a planet, apparently, and it's uh, our tutorial level. So I haven't played this in years, like since I made it pretty much, uh, but I do remember that when we were making it, uh, we, I honestly can't remember what started this, but we, we ended up doing like a Windows 98 sort of theme, where the the joke is that your ship is so junky and so old that it runs on Windows 98, <laughs> so... Uh, that's why the UI is so old looking. But this is the tutorial. Uh, Instructor Joe here is going to tell us how to play. Uh, use a WAC. Man, this system looks old. And he says, yep, that's all you could afford, though. It's running Windows 95. And I said, this doesn't look like anything, uh, this doesn't look anything like Windows 95. And he goes, Windows 1995. Uh, and I thought that joke was hilarious. Because uh, it's like, haha, t it's like Windows 2095, but no. Uh, but yeah, so let's see. Three weapon slots. Uh, three, weapons, three weapons to the system. There should be one, which is the dual lasers, uh, which left-clicking should fire them. And now I'm supposed to shoot the targets. I actually forgot there was like actually a target training. Uh, space to continue. Some final tips, if you see a crate, blow it up and collect the credits, you'll need the extra money. And then it just says, here, take this, and doesn't tell you what it is. Uh, but that's like the a laser, I believe, which if you right-click, will fire? Maybe? Let's see. Oh, this music. Ooh. Yeah, so the funny thing about the laser is that I didn't really know what I was doing, so it's just a line that goes from the top of the screen to the middle of your ship. And even if you rotate, oh god, I should be shooting. Even if you rotate, it still doesn't. It's like not coming out of the center. Other than that, I think the game still looks okay. The graphics, I mean, Devon's a good artist, so even though my programming is totally garbage at this time, the uh, the game still manages to look pretty all right. The the little particles were me. They were like <laughs> 10 pixels, so I just uh, drew a little garbage, and they they come out of the side. Oh. We've com we've gotten to the end of the level. I, the music stopped, which means it's time for the boss to show up. And the credits don't actually do anything, but they were planned to like buy upgrades. Oh god, that music is so much louder. 
Alright, let's see. So the boss, uh, I was too lazy to actually program any unique mechanics, so it just sort of flings garbage at you. Spawns garbage. Oh, the music doesn't even loop properly. I, I was really new to making music, too. Uh, die, boss, die. When it gets to the final stage, it's gonna shoot lasers and I'm gonna... Uh. Try not to skip the cutscene that happens after this. Because if, it, if you click too fast, you'll skip the cutscene and I want to see it. How much health do you have? Alright, there we go. So the boss blows up, and then if you if you press any key, it'll uh, it'll go away. So most people skipped this screen. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. That was basically the end of the game. It's actually got some bugs in it, I think. If you do, like... Like, mute literally just doesn't work, I guess. So that's cool. Uh, but yeah, this game was rough, but it was so much more than the previous game. And, and I was so happy after this jam was done. I was like, I felt so accomplished. Like, I was an actual game developer, and I made a game, and it's amazing. Uh, but yeah, obviously this game is full of mistakes, and now we're going to look at them. So the art in this game was pretty good. Uh, Devon's a really good artist, and even at the time, he was able to draw some some really good stuff. Uh, sprites like this are far more than I could ever draw. Uh, I'm super happy that I got to work with him. Uh, so one thing that I drew is this health bar that didn't make it into the game. Thank God it looks terrible. Uh, but the idea was that it would switch between frames for, for your different health. Um, okay, this is some good old organization here. So this is the asteroid particle. It's like... I, th I think I just took the original asteroid and shrunk it down so it's like 10 pixels uh, and it looks terrible but it doesn't matter uh, I was still doing the thing where I rotated it a whole bunch of times and used the frames because I didn't know how to just rotate the sprite uh, the boss is actually interesting and something that I, I really liked learning uh, so what I did for the boss is I uh, built out the three different sections that fall off of it, the, di the different pieces, uh, and I had them be the same sprite size with the same, uh, what, do, what do you call it, origin, which is like the handle basically, so that when they fall off you can just switch this to its uh, next frame and it'll lose the pieces of it while these independent ones come off and float away. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, it was my first time making a boss for any game, so I, I had fun. Uh, yeah, that's... that. This uh, menu world, actually, Devon was pissed at me because I set it to the wrong animation speed in the menu, so it looks stupid. Um, but I didn't know. I thought it still looked amazing, and he was like, nah, it looks dumb. And I was like, oh. Yeah, so for the intro and for the end credits, I literally made like a full screen image that just shows up uh, and is an object, I think. So that's not great. Same with the tutorial. I actually am curious how I did the dialogue. Uh, so let's find that. Uh, oh, God. So <laughs> I definitely used some magic numbers here. Uh, if you're not sure what magic numbers are, if you're if you're not a real programmer or or like really into programming, uh, the fact that I'm specifically putting in these random numbers as to where I want to draw the health bar is a really really bad idea. You should not be doing this. Uh, you should be either using some relative form of finding the position where you need to draw it, or or something like that, so that you <laughs> you just shouldn't be doing this. Is what I'm saying. Uh, same with drawing the where you have your credits. It's literally like specific pixels on the screen that I decided it should be drawn at. Uh, let's see. What's happening in the player step? Oh, God. So at this point, I had learned to uh, put the brace after the if statements. And you'll see that throughout the games, I actually go back and forth between uh, doing that, as well as camel casing and a couple of other different things that I am very inconsistent with. Uh, at this point, also, I didn't uh, use equals equals. I had worked with only Game Maker, and it'll be this way for a while. Uh, so you'll see a lot of missing semicolons. If you're a really strict programmer, you'll see a lot of missing double equal signs. Uh, actually, there's 
I don't think there's any semicolons in this entire code base. So that's pretty that's pretty good. <laughs> and this stuff stuff like this, more magic numbers where it's like if x is less than or equal to room width minus 74 specifically, then you can go to the right, you know? But only if you're within 74 pixels of the, the right side of the screen. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, so <laughs> this is something that happened a lot when I was learning programming uh, that is sort of embarrassing. Just these stacked up if statements, uh, and also equals equals false, equals equals true. Like, this could all be compressed so easily to a line like, uh, I mean, I wouldn't write the same code, but if not that, and if not beam lock, I have to write and beam lock and beam active and beam charge and not instance exists obj beam then do this like you you could compress this all to one line it's not a good line but you theoretically could compress it if you were still coding this same style and then you got some more magic numbers here creating the beam exactly where it needs to be uh let's see the boss the boss has got some oh god the boss uses a timeline actually i haven't used a timeline i think since this game uh but timelines in game maker were basically just a way to create a bunch of events that happen in a sequence over a certain amount of time so the boss timeline is why did i do this the boss timeline is literally just a thing that repeats every 15 frames. That, uh, thing? Okay. Thing is just a random number between, uh, z zero and four. And if it's, it'll just create a different piece of scrap depending on what it generates. And then once the boss hits its final phase, uh, oh wait. <laughs> Yeah, the boss's final phase is to create lasers and shoot them at you. But it creates them at this specific position because magic numbers, you know. And then this is the boss's death sequence, which, what, creates explosions? Yeah, it just creates explosions at, like, <laughs> at random places. I don't think I knew how to use alarms at this time because this is something that you could totally do with an alarm uh, that I just never did, I guess. I, I'm still interested to find out the uh, dialogue. Where did I do the dialogue? That might be inside an object. So let's find out. Menu. Tutorial. Where's some tutorial stuff? I like that I had this object so that I could put excellent on the main menu. So this object that, that bounces up and down or like grows and shrinks is actually a game object that I just put in there. Like all of these, yeah, okay, it's, <laughs> what was I doing, man? Control, let's see. Oh, I did know how to use alarms, but I just never used them for some reason. Okay. So I found a dialogue object. <laughs> that took me so long, I'm not going to lie. I know it was just sitting right there, uh, but it took me a bit to find that. Uh, let's see what it does. So first of all, it sets itself to its uh, completely random position, which is down at the bottom of the screen. Uh, and it sets an alarm. Okay. So, oh. Okay. So actually, the way that I did this is with different frames so where's the tutorial sprite uh so there's got to be a sprite somewhere around here what is this this is just a duplicate okay sprite 
mission tutorial. Okay. So, there's no extra frames here. It's just a button. So where is the t t Okay, SPR dialog is what it's called. So where is SPR dialog? Oh, it's tutorial. Okay. So this is how I did the dialog. That's pretty good. Also, for some reason, even though the instructor, or, or rather the image here never changes, I decided to separate it as a different sprite and draw it, probably using a magic number in that spot. So I think that's funny. This random origin right over where? 267 down at the bottom. Yeah, I was, uh, I was definitely trying some stuff. Uh, and then, of course... Every room is in 1280 to 10, uh, 720, 30 frames per second. But yeah, that's about it for this game. The code was quite a mess for sure, and I was really happy about it when we finished, and I wanted to make more games, uh, and I was super excited about it. Uh, so let's get to the next one.